Well, it is dry out there. Five rural municipalities in southwest Saskatchewan have declared states of emergency due to drought. And on Monday, the provincial and federal governments announced they'll be chipping in money for the farmers who need it. Our province's history with drought is a long one, dating back hundreds of years. And it's been studied by Professor David Sochin using tree rings. He's the director of Prairie Adaptation Research Collaborative at University of Regina. And he joins me now to tell us more about what this could mean for our future. Good morning, David. Hi, Tori. So take us back a little bit. Where have you collected trees in southwest Saskatchewan that help you look back at the past? Well, we started in the Cypress Hills actually in the late 1980s. And 1980s was also a period of consecutive droughts. It was really bad droughts in 85, 88. And so we started in the Cypress Hills, but we've been collecting wood every summer since then. So we've been to more than 200 locations in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and the adjacent states and provinces and territories. So we have thousands and thousands of pieces of old wood. And what is the history of Southwest Saskatchewan with drought? Well, our history goes back actually uh, a thousand years because we've been able to find wood, mostly not so much in the Cypress Hills, but nearby in in Alberta and the foothills, and that's not too far away. So Mm -hmm. we, uh, we fairly soon into our research, we began to discover that there have been droughts in the past. This is pre-settlement, pre-settlement period droughts that lasted decades. And so we began warning people, you know, it's entirely possible that we could have a drought lasting consecutive years up to a decade or more in the future. But when it recurs in the future, it'll be occurring in a warmer climate. Well, unfortunately, it seems like that warning that we issued um, as the rubber has hit the road or it's reality because I'm looking right now at a chart of precipitation at Swift Current and the last eight years have had a fairly large precipitation deficit. But of course, we've been told that by ranchers and farmers in the Southwest that they've had eight consecutive years of drought. Right, and just just nothing to go on in the soil. Um, it's too soon, obviously, for you to compare this summer. But what have you heard uh, in that area? What are what are people saying now? Well, I've I've read all the reports, and I've been I gave a talk on Swift Current a few weeks ago. In fact, I I give a lot of talks to to rural people, and uh, I I I learn as much as as I teach because they tell me what they're experiencing. And of course. It's a serious, they've encountered some serious challenges in producing cattle and grain and uh, and with a lack of soil moisture. There was just what, 10, 5, 10 years, uh, days ago, there was a fairly decent rainfall, but it was a cloudburst. It was a deluge of water, which isn't that useful because most of it runs off. So what's really required is a shift. We need a shift in the climate towards a wetter period because we do get these periods, these decades, dry decades, and then they're followed by wet decades. But I mean, that sounds okay, unless you're a producer, because you have to wait, you have to actually live and wait and work through a dry decade to get to the wet one. Yeah, to to weather that storm, if you will. And so what are you going to be looking for in that area in the coming years? Well, we know that uh, this drought is occurring in a warmer climate. Of course, mm-hmm. it's not caused by climate change. It's a natural event, these droughts, but but they're occurring now in a climate that's warmer than in the past, a climate in which our summer, our winters are shorter and warmer, and therefore the, the summers are, are longer. Um, and as a result, we there's pretty good science to indicate that when droughts occur they're a little bit more intense or impactful because they're occurring in a in a world that's warmer than in the past and can the tree rings that you study can can it help us know what droughts might be like going forward beyond what we're in now sure does which is why we do it it really the tree rings really provide this long historical context in the climate that we're experiencing now and the climate that we expect in the future. The only information we have on the climate of the future is from these climate models that that simulate the climate of the earth. And we don't really know whether they, we think they're right, but uh, we need to compare them to other sources of information 
we have a lot of weather station data, but uh, right. the longest weather records only go back about a hundred years, but the tree rings go back a thousand years. So they're really, the tree rings are enable us are enabling us to, to test and, and uh, provide a check on what the climate models are saying about the future. Fascinating stuff. We appreciate you telling us about it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me.